Okay, now we're going to talk about the idea of graphing inequalities on the number line. Well, first off, you need to know what an inequality is. Um, when I talk about inequalities, I'm just saying stuff that probably when you were a kid or uh, when you first learned about it, you called it greater than, less than. An equal statement would be um, 5 equals 5. That's an equality because it shows it. If one's bigger than the other, 5 greater than 6 or even 5 greater than or equal to 6, it shows that this... It, or, by the way, is a lie, so I should put 15 there, right? Um, if you say 15 is greater than 6, or 15 is greater than or equal to 6, uh, that makes them not equal. It's either greater than, or it's equal to, or in this case, it just proves that it's actually greater. So an inequality is just a statement where the two sides aren't equal to each other. Now, when I want to graph them on a number line, which is a little bit different than graphing them on a, um, a coordinate plane, or like the xy axis, it's important for me to understand the notation behind it. In this situation, I have an x and a 5. One of those is going to be greater than the other, otherwise this is an equality statement. I can tell which one is greater simply by looking at the inequality signage right here. Now, uh, probably as a child you were told that the alligator eats the big one, or I was in the 80s, so we said Pac-Man, it was like this whole thing. Anyway, that's kind of a deceptive way to go about it because of the fact that it may be easy to remember, but it doesn't give you any focus. When we're graphing inequalities when we have an unknown or a variable, our goal is to make that the focus of our statement. So I don't just say whatever I want, and it's always true, because in this case, x is greater than 5, but I could also say 5 is less than x, and that can make it really difficult to graph. So what I'm going to do is focus on the variable itself. Then I'm going to look at the symbol. Think of it as a like symbolic language, not so much as just some alligator. If I look at the idea of I'm trying to express something to someone else who can't speak the same language, it's easy to see that the big end, or the larger open end, it's a lot further from here to here than it is from a single dot, this is the large end. So this indicates that this is the larger of the two uh, components. This end is next to the small end, so I know that that 5 is smaller. But I don't have to know 5 is smaller, just that x is bigger. So in this case, I had x is greater than 5, and that's true. On the other side, this also says x is greater than 5. Sometimes it gets a little tricky when you flip the uh, variable to the other side, but all you have to remember is that if the big end is next to the x, that means x is greater than, because it shows symbolically that that's what it is. Now, here I have a line underneath that inequality. What that means is that it's also equal to. This is like I have, I have a group of numbers. You can vote when you turn 18. So the uh, expression for that would be anybody over 18 and 18 year olds. This would be greater than or equal to. If it was you have to be uh, one day older than your 18th birthday, it would look like this, because in this case, 18 would not be included. But in this case, 18 is part of the answer. So it's a whole stream of answers as opposed to a single number. Uh, so we look at this one. In this case, the x is next to the little end. So it's the smaller one, so that x is less than. Same thing if I had done this. x is still less than here. It's next to the smaller end. Um, on this side, x is less than or equal to negative 4. So that's a little bit of a difference, because negative 4 is actually actually part of the answer. Now that we've got that down, let's talk about actually graphing them. It's actually really simple to graph them on a number line. You just have to follow three steps. The first step is to find the number that they tell you to find that's actually in the problem and circle that value on the number line. The second step is to decide whether you're going to fill in that circle or leave it not filled. I guess that's the question, to fill or not to fill. And the last step is to just draw the arrow to indicate, draw an arrow to indicate how much of the, uh, or in what direction the answers end up going. So am I including 5 and 6 or am I only including 3 and 2 and 1 and on down? So let's take a look at an example of one. We'll just do quick, two quick ones and we're done. x is greater than 3. So the first thing I need to do, based on the rules of circle the value, is to go to 3, and it's a positive 3, and just make a circle. Now, the second step is to fill or not to fill. That's determined by this symbol here. If it is a greater than equal to, or a less than equal to, so it is either one of these, it means I'm going to fill in my circle. The reason that I'm going to fill in my circle is because my answer includes that 3. So in my other situation where I was voting, 18-year-olds can vote. So I'm going to circle 18, and I'm going to fill it in to show that 18-year-olds can vote, and then on the way up. Now in a situation where an 18-year-old could not vote, but an 18-year-old in one day could vote, I would have 
a circle at 18 and then everything better than 18 but not 18 itself. That's what the circle is closed or open. So in this case it is a just a greater than or less than sign and I'm not going to fill it in because there's no line underneath. So number three isn't actually part of the answer. It's just like our barrier. It's kinda like a fence. Now I have to look at where X is. X is next to the bigger end of this symbol. By the way I'm drawing the arrow to show the way. Um, X is next to the open side so that means it's the big end. So X is greater because it's big so you just go up. You think about where numbers get bigger. A 4 is bigger than 3 and so is 5, but 2 is not and neither is 1, so I have to draw the arrow this way. The reason we draw the arrow, by the way, is because technically every number bigger than 3 is on there and we'd run out of paper. So one more. I mixed a couple components on this one that caused some trouble. It's not really difficult. So the first thing I need to do is, of course, circle my value. My value is one half. That's not on here, so I'm going to have to figure out where that's located. Um, I know that one half is a fraction. Is There's no one there, and there's no uh, two or anything else, so I know it's got to be somewhat less than one, because it's just a fraction with no mixed number, and it's got to be more than zero, because it's not negative, so it's somewhere in here. And if I broke it into two parts, the part I would break it is right here, so I'm going to make a circle right there. My second step is to fill or not to fill. This says it's also equal to that one half. So because of that, I'm going to fill this in to let people know that, yeah, one half's part of the answer also. The last thing that I need to deal with is B is greater than or equal to. Um, the reason that I know it's greater than, by the way, is because the B is next to the big end. It's not next to the small end. That would be a less than sign. But you're natural inclination is just to draw the line the way that the uh, arrow points. That doesn't work all the time. Especially, it, it doesn't work when the variable is over here. So B is greater than, so you have to think, where do numbers get greater than one half? So one's greater than one half, and so is two and three, so I'm going to draw my arrow that way. And that's it. That's how you graph inequalities.